So good morning and welcome to our Saturday session on basics of finance. I'm Sujata from Happy Investor, Bangalore. And we are on a journey of making finances a little more interesting as well as sharing financial uh, literacy across and just increasing the financial literacy among uh, various sections of society. And one of those initiatives is today's session. So we all know that money and finance is important and is an important aspect of entire um, lifestyle, of how our lives revolve around money to a certain extent, and money makes life easy. But we also know that when money gets tight, it kind of creates an emergency situation or life can throw different kinds of situations at us, which we don't know when and how it will come. In those times, it's important to have money as a backup to be able to take care of that situation comfortably. So here we are today with our session on how to build your emergency fund. We take an example of a usual family in India. So meet the Kumar family. It's Rajesh, he's 38 years old. His wife, Sneha, 37. And they have two young children, Aryan, eight years old, and Rhea, five years old. This is a happy working professional family in India. So Rajesh works in an MNC and earns about a lakh per month. While Sneha works in a startup and earns about 50,000 per month which makes the total mon family monthly income of about a lakh and a half every month. And this is what they use for their various re requirements in the family, which is like they have an EMI of 50,000, which includes a car loan as well as a home loan EMI. They have school fees to pay for both the children. And they have household expenses, which runs up to an average of about 40,000 per month. So they have a total savings left of about 30,000 per month. And all the prior savings or investments that they had over the years was currently used towards the purchase of a home. So they are today left with a total savings of about 30,000 30, in the kitty. Now we all know life is an unpredictable and then the story changes when things change. So Rajesh suddenly loses his job. While at the same time, Sneha meets with an accident and she needs a surgery. These are some things which the couple was totally not looking forward to or wasn't really expecting. And hence, Rajesh is in a dialogue. So what's his problem? His problem is that he's facing an uncertainty. It's a job loss for him and it's a medical emergency for his wife. He has monthly expenses to run for the home. He has a home loan to pay. He has a car loan EMI to pay. And he has potential medical bills coming up. So how will they manage all this with the minimal savings of 30000 that they currently have? So what was Rajesh's mistake? Or what was the couple's mistake? There was no provision for an emergency fund. And what Rajesh thought was he could use his credit card as an emergency backup. A credit card can never be an emergency backup. It's only a backup for not having cash in hand for the immediate purpose, but something that you can pay off once purchased on the credit. So it can never be a backup for an emergency requirement where you don't have access to money. So what is the importance of an emergency fund? It's only when things go wrong that one realizes that there needs to be a certain amount of money kept aside, which needs, can be accessed anytime. So what does that give you? It gives you financial security. It ensures that you can take care of an emergency that crops up at any time, and you will be able to handle any kind of unforeseen expenses that come up. You will be able to cope with 
a reduction in income or the job loss or any kind of disruption in the money flow. It also ensures a fair amount of liquidity so that you have access to that money and you will be able to pay your regular loan EMIs, which is a very critical important of financial plan. So how do you, so those are the important aspects of if you have an emergency fund, what you can do. But you also need to know how do you build this emergency fund. So first step in that is to set a target. You should aim for at least three to six months worth of your regular living expenses, be it household expense, school fees, uh, regular utility bills, etc. Plus any EMIs that you have to pay off. So this should be your first thing. How much do you need for a month? And then aim to have at least six to three to six months of that amount available. Then you should start contributing towards this on a consistent basis. It's not possible that you can keep all of that together at one time. And once you decide that you have to contribute this consistently, you need to ensure that you put it automatically. Not that, okay, this month I have extra money, so I put it towards emergency fund. Next month I'm doing something else, so I won't add. No, it needs to be going regularly till you have that target set. The best way to do that is to set up an SIP and contribute a monthly amount towards that target regularly. And then you, once you've done that, you also need to check on a regular basis whether you've withdrawn any money from that emergency for any particular emergency requirement. And if you have, then you need to refill. And one has to understand that this needs to be done regularly. So for example, in Rajesh's family, we saw that they have monthly EMIs, expense, school fees, et cetera, totaling to about 1.2 lakhs. So therefore, if you say six months of this expense, it's about 7.2 lakhs that they should have had at some point available such that, you know, if any kind of disturbance happens, they will still be able to manage for six months. And of course, you can't set this aside at one time. You can build it over a period of time. But what one needs to remember is once you set up an emergency fund, the money from that need can be accessed only in the case of an emergency and not for any other purpose. And once accessed, you need to fill it back. So then where do you park the money that is meant for this kind of an emergency fund? There are various options and we'll take that step by step. One, you need to have a certain amount of money in your savings bank account. Why? Because this is immediate access, Lego. It ensures you have liquidity. Middle of the night, you can go into the ATM and access that cash. Or you go to some place with your debit card, you will be able to access the amount in your savings account. So it's critical that some amount of your emergency fund is parked in your savings bank. The other option is a fixed deposit with an overdraft facility. A fixed deposit basically gives you a slightly higher interest than what you have in your savings bank account. But when you move it into an overdraft facility, it is still liquid. It helps you to access that money without breaking your fixed deposit, which would entail a penalty. In an emergency, you can access the money in the overdraft account. And once that emergency is done, you can refill the amount and ensure that your fixed deposit is locked up. The third option, which gives you more flexibility, is liquid funds under the umbrella of mutual funds. We all know that we are told that mutual funds are subject to market risk. But we aren't informed that within the mutual fund umbrella, there is a category of funds which are called liquid funds, which are very useful when it comes to planning this kind of emergency or short-term requirement. These are not connected to the equity market and hence doesn't have the risk of going down in value because of volatility. And these are accessible anytime within one working day and they give you better returns than FD and you can put and remove whenever you need. 
uh has anybody anybody having any kind of questions to for the information till now you could unmute yourself and let us and ask till we complete the rest of the session If not, we'll continue with where we are going for this video. So these are the different options you have to park your emergency fund. And you could put, you could use all three facilities and have a little bit in everything. So what are the advantages of having an emergency fund? It ensures that you can take care of your regular expenses, even in the absence of dis disruption of money flow whether it is from business income or from a salary. It allows you to have the independence to manage your emergencies in the sense that if you are in a financial emergency for any kind of reason, you do not have to depend on other family members or other friends, colleagues, or your employer to tide over that emergency. You have made yourself self-sufficient to handle that kind of emergency on your own. You can continue paying your EMIs without any penalty. And this also is critical in terms of maintaining your credit score for future. And the fact that you can take care of all these things on your own ensures that you are on less stress, you are at peace of mind, and you can focus on the exact emergency that you have in hand, be it a family emergency, be it a looking for a new job or taking care of the medical emergency at, at, at home, since there's no stress on how you're going to manage the finances, you can focus better on that. So in conclusion, we see that it's not only enough to manage your finances well, ensure you have expenses, ensure you have investments. But you also need to ensure that you have an emergency fund that you can take care of you in the event of a financial instrument. So start today to secure your future against any kind of uncertainties. And it also helps in having an emergency fund of this nature also helps in saving and keeping your savings and investments safe. Because if you didn't have this, then you would be breaking your savings, which also doesn't help in the long term. So we at Happy Investor believe that building an emergency fund is the first step in ensuring your own stability, safety, and financial uh, comfort. So we would be glad to help you to build this up. You can reach out to us. Our numbers, 96200-96201, that's my number. And our office numbers are 98861, You can also write to us at info at happyinvestor.in. And now oh, we can take any kind of questions that anybody would have. You can unmute yourself and we can take your questions. Anybody with any kind of questions? Yeah, it's you could ask. Yeah, yes, you could. Yes. Yeah. Uh, regarding that uh, FD. Uh, how can you much increase your Can you increase your volume a little bit, please? Yeah, yeah. How the FD? The how much they'll give the overdraft? Uh, generally, an uh, overdraft is to uh, ninety percent of your FD value. That means loan. They are going loan on the FD. Now, for example, if you make an FD of one lakh. Okay. And you. Uh, except you ask for an overdraft facility. Okay. You are allowed to withdraw up to ninety thousand out of the one lakh. Ah. Use it for your requirement, and then you put it back when your emergency is over. Is, for is the number of good? days that you use it. Okay. They'll yeah, charge. So it's considered. It's considered a loan on your deposit. But they'll charge loan for, for interest for that, no? They will charge you the interest for the number of days that you use that money. Okay. So if your FD is giving you 7% ah. and the loan rate is 7.5%, ah. 
or 8%, okay. then that difference is charged for the number of days that you use it. Okay. And how about the mutual but, funds, madam? But it helps you to at least keep your FD without having to break it. Okay. Uh, in liquid funds, the rate of return on liquid funds is similar to FDs. Hmm. The advantage you get here is you can add an amount anytime okay. and withdraw an amount anytime without impacting the growth on the balance that is there within the fund. Okay. But you would be able to access that money within one working day. Okay. So if you request for that money today, you will get the credit into your bank account the next working day. Yeah. yeah. And, so uh, you should about... always have some money that you can access anytime, okay. 24 hours a day. Okay. Thank you. And uh, how about the mutual funds? Uh, uh, but we, it, we, we, are, we are deposit for a long time, uh, three, four years. Then no, we can... because it is a liquid fund. You can put it and keep it for whatever time you want. Ah, how to withdraw then? then? As an emergency fund? How yeah, to... you... ah. yeah. So whoever is managing your mutual fund. Yeah. Okay. They will be able to do it for you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It is part of your long term, as part of your mutual fund portfolio. You should have long term as well as short term in within that. So within that short term, you can have an allocation in liquid funds mm. towards your emergency costs. So this, these are the only three ways: uh, savings account, uh, mutual funds, and also FD. You're telling all three. Yeah, because these are the three things that will help you to access the money anytime. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, madam, thank of you. Of course, a certain amount of cash at home or okay. cash in hand, which also today is not really required because nobody handles cash much. Okay. Okay, madam, thank you. Yeah, ma anything else? Ma'am, only if, if we have this uh, long, uh, long term. Uh, mutual funds. Can we access this liquidity funds from mutual funds or short term also yeah. is required? Yes, you can. So, whoever is managing your mutual funds. Yes, for that short term, uh, uh, this is required or uh, both? No, I didn't answer. I didn't understand your question. Uh, matlab, uh, see, for long term uh, MF, can I get huh. the liquidity? See, long-term MF may be your liquidity. It's not that you can't get out of money. But what we put for long-term, it goes to the equity. So what is it? It can be reduced in the value. So for liquidity, we, not, we need short-term uh, MF. Yes, what you need to get out of the liquidity, we don't put it in the equity. Mein nahi that is why that is called liquid funds. It is a different category of mutual fund, which is meant for the short term. Um, some yeah. issues on your side. No, what I meant was mm -hmm. within the mutual fund category, mm -hmm. you have some funds which are meant for the short term or for any time use. Okay. Those are called liquid funds. So, emergency money should be in that category, mm -hmm. not in the long-term category. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah? Yeah. Any Thank other you. queries? Uh, hi, Sujata Rupaya. So, hi, Rupa. How what's are you? the... I'm doing good. Thanks, Dara. How are you? Um, so, what's the suggested duration uh, to accommodate or accumulate all these uh, emergency funds? So, like I say, like if I need eight lakhs, is what I want as an emergency fund. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what, how do you suggest, like by what time I should keep that handy? Uh, I mean, emergency can happen any time, but when you start, uh, what is yeah. that time window? See, uh, you can build it over a period of time. Uh, it also mm -hmm. depends on how much you can set aside on a monthly basis okay. based on your current inflow and expenses. Mm -hmm. But you can keep it, uh, say, six months as a target to build up your requirements. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay then. So we will then close the session for today. Thank you everybody for being part of our exercise today. And we hope to see you joining us for our next sessions as well. We will be taking different uh, topics which are part of basic funnels. Thank you very much and have a good weekend ahead. Ma'am, I Bye -bye. have a question. Yes. Ma'am, if we have any long-term MF, that won't help like in emergencies? It will, but the only question with a long-term MF is at any point in time, it could go up or down. So at the point of your emergency, if it is down, which we cannot oh. control, okay. then oh. it will not help in an emergency. You can still okay. take out the value that is there. <laughs> it's not locked in. Aapne 50,000 dala, wo 50,000, 60,000 ho gaya. Kuch hmm. agle saal mein wo thoda niche ho gaya aur aapko jab 50 laga nikalna ho, agar wo 50 nahi hai, to aap 40 nikal sakte ho. Lekin aapka jo emergency requirement hai, wo fil fulfill nahi hoga agar wo down hai. Isi liye okay. emergency ka jo paisa hota hai, wo kabhi down nahi hona chahiye. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much and have a good weekend ahead. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.